Let's get the read on all this from former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and UC Berkeley Law Professor John Yu. John, great to see you. You know, the, they, they use the term unacceptable. I would use the term horrendous. I mean, this, this is extraordinary how, how many times uh, this has been abused. Uh, and a lot of people warned us uh, back during the, Patri when the you know, after 9-11, Patriot Act, FISA, that this, this sort of thing might happen. Now that it has, shouldn't we really take a second look at whether we want to get rid of these FISA courts? I share your disappointment, David. I was there at the Justice Department on 9-11, and I did work on the Patriot Act on, on, on some of these exact programs. There was a fundamental deal made here between the Justice Department and Congress and the American people, which was give the Justice Department and the FBI these broader search tools, which they hadn't had before, which hadn't been able to be used to stop 9-11. But the deal would be they would not be used to search for domestic crime. They would not be mm -hmm. used to search for American citizens who had nothing to do with ter terrorism or foreign espionage. And it's clear here that the FBI did this. And you know, John, let me, let me yet... just interrupt if I can, because I, mm -hmm. I was on your side back when that debate was happening. Yeah. And, uh, all my libertarian friends I said, in, invariably, it is going to be used to, to spy on Americans, and, and it'll be misused, because that's just the way human the human condition is. And that's why we had all these checks and balances in our system that the FISA sort of jumped over. Uh, that wall that used to exist between FBI and CIA, et cetera, was torn down for, for good reasons initially. But now, isn't it time to really rethink of whether you and I were on the wrong side of this issue? I don't think we were wrong in the sense that we successfully used the tools to break up al-Qaeda and to stop attacks on the homeland. But you're right, David, there's always this urge to use these tools for something else. To use these tools, for example, as the reports show on donors to congressional campaigns. I'm not sure the problem is the powers themselves rather than the FBI, whether the institution, the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. had become so biased in a way that you and I couldn't foresee right. 20 years ago. And that we're seeing confirmation of that now in the Durham report. We're yeah. seeing confirmation of that in this whistleblower hearing that well, the Hill had this We'll week. talk about both of those, but with regard to the Durham report, I mean, a lot of people are poo-pooing Durham and, I mean, the mainstream media and the Democrats saying he didn't really get anything. He took a couple of cases to court. He lost. Fact is, is that one of the cases that was pled in that in that investigation was the case of, of Kevin Kleinsmith. He was an FBI attorney who admitted that he had been doctoring evidence to provide to the FISA courts to be able to spy on Americans. He admitted that. He pled a deal rather than plead guilty. But the fact is, is that there actually there was a, at least one FBI attorney who willingly admitted that he'd been doctoring these reports. I mean, that shows two things. One, that we really do have to change the whole process. And two, that Durham really did get to the bottom of a lot of things in his report. I think that's right, David. I think what the report shows is that, look, a lot of bad things happened at the FBI. Only a tiny portion of those involve criminal prosecution. I know a lot of people are angry. I share their disappointment again with the FBI. But I don't know whether you can try the people like a McCabe, like a Strzok, like even a Jim Comey. Instead, what Durham said is, I want to put all this before the American people. I want to put this all before the Congress. Have hearings, cut off funding, restructure the FBI, David. You're completely right. Maybe processes have to be changed. Maybe the FBI has to be restructured in a fundamental way mm. because maybe there's something about the bias at the very top of the leadership of the FBI that causes it to go back to your original question, yeah. to make these ab mistakes or to abuse their powers well, we again in ways bias. that we couldn't foresee. We saw the bias. We've seen FBI agents leave. Of course, the whistleblowers we'll talk about in a second, but the Wall Street Journal uh, printed out a, a list of, of the various points that, that Durham brought out his report. No basis for investigation. Not a single U.S. agency, by the way, had any evidence of collusion uh, at the time that they came out with this whole thing. Bias, you think of Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, I mentioned Kevin Kleinsmith, double standards, Hillary Clinton's conflicts of interest with the Clinton Foundation weren't investigated to the extent that a phony charge against uh, on Russian collusion was. Willful ignorance, the FBI ignored evidence it was being used by the Clinton campaign to execute a political dirty trick. And Russian disinformation, the FBI may have begun as a Russian intel operation, the, the FBI probe. So, I mean, it's so many, but it's the number one, no basis for investigation. They weren't going after a crime. They were going after an individual, Donald Trump. 
that is actually the most shocking thing is that if you strip away all the legalese and technical language in the report, what you have is the Hillary Clinton campaign came up with a dirty, dirty political campaign trick. But it only got legs because they were able to convince right, people who were of their same party, the leadership of the FBI, the leadership of the intelligence agencies under the Obama administration, under the Democratic Party, to either willingly take it or dupe them yeah. into taking it and use the vast powers of the government than to pursue the candidate of the other political yeah. party during a presidential election that was a red line that should never have been crossed right. since Watergate. I, I just want to throw this soundbite in from the FBI whistleblower's testimony this week. And let me just roll tape and get your reaction. Go ahead. The FBI suspended my security clearance, accusing me of actually being disloyal to my country. This outrageous and insulting accusation is based on unsubstantiated accusations that I hold conspiratorial views regarding the events of January 6, 2021, and that I allegedly sympathize with criminal conduct. I do not. Now, very quickly, John, one of the Democrats criticizing these whistleblowers actually had the audacity to call him a, uh, or to put him in the, in the notion that there was, this was a racist investigation, brought the black... I mean, you know, obviously, it was crazy. But quickly, your reaction to this. Uh, you and I probably remember when Democrats used to like whistleblowers. Yeah. People who are in charge of leading the FBI and fixing it should welcome feedback and understand okay. information about things that are going wrong in the agency, not John, dismissing it. we got to leave it at that. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.